got your presence on my mind I feel like it's been like that all the time I got your presence on my mind I feel like it's been like that all the time I feel like it's been like that all the time Cause truly you have been really on my mind And your presence with my soul alive How can I be known and your name not be lifted high Oh The resurrection power living in me, that's the cry. I need a stress, them trials come with tests, yeah. Moving like a test, like I got some homies, they bless, yeah. Shine that light on your flesh like fair. Sipping on blood, yeah, we sipping on red. I'm capping my rhyme and I do what I said. Revival is here, this the start of the end. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. With the truth, and I promise you did. God is in rhythm, bro. Tell me what it is. Spirits moving even in the kids. If you think it's fake, then it is what it is. Ain't no cap in my rap. I tell you right now, got spirit moving. If you not live for Christ, then you ain't winning, boy. You On my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. Tell me the truth, and I promise you did. God is in rhythm, bro. Tell me what it is. Spirits moving even in the kids. If you think it's fake, then it is what it is. Ain't no cap in my rap. I tell you right now, got spirit moving. If you not live for Christ, then you ain't winning, boy. You
What's up, Supernatural Life family? Man, I'm excited. Here's the real reason I'm excited. I got a hot lady next to me. My goodness. I got my wife sitting here right now. So go ahead and uh, let them see your eye. Ah, let Heather say hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's good to have you here, babe. Honored to be here this yeah. evening. This evening? You're glowing. It might be because you're pregnant. <laughs> or it's these amazing got, lighting that we got going. <laughs> yeah, hof hopefully we can get Isaiah so on and he can switch around when he's supposed to. We'll see. Hopefully he'll do well. He will do great. He will do great. Guys, welcome to the live stream. It's going to be a good one. Look, make sure that you like and share. We want to get some more eyes on this before I jump into the topic. Let's go ahead and let's get over a thousand people watching tonight. So go ahead, keep liking, keep sharing. Uh, we're almost near 200 viewers right now. There we go. We just hit it. Let's keep pushing, guys. Uh, this topic is going to be good. And me and my beautiful wife and my little son in the belly, we're going to be able to talk about this because we have history with it. And um, we can tell you the spiritual ramifications that come along with it, too. Guys, the topic I'm going to speak on is premarital S-E-X. We're going to talk about that today. I got I think it's a word I got to be a little careful for. Fornication. Careful with. Yeah, we're going to talk about fornication before marriage. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to bring some Bible, uh, obviously some Bible scripture to you and, you know, some revelation that I've gotten along the way and that Heather has gotten along the way. Well, I can tell you some stories about this one. My goodness. I, if I ain't got stories. I think you most got a couple. <laughs> yeah, we do have a couple. <laughs> I uh I think many of you on here, many of you on here have stories about this too. But I, I hope as we are sharing, you guys are going to get revelation. Some of you are, are probably still in it. You, you guys might be living together with somebody outside of marriage. We'll hit on that a little bit, you know, and uh, tell you how there's a way out of it and, and stuff like that. And tell you why you should protect your body. Actually, there's in 1 Corinthians... There is plenty of scripture talking about protect your body, honor the, honor the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to read those scriptures tonight. I'm going to talk about it. But anyway, like I said, if you're just jumping in one more time, like the video, guys, and share. I'll be saying that throughout the video also because I believe this is a very impactful teaching. So me and Heather, we have been married since October 2020. October 4th. That's right. Good job. Woo, boy, I thought, yeah, <laughs> hey, I thought I was going to get in trouble for a second. Oh, and I want to say this, supernaturallife.org, guys, for events. And if you want to be a forerunner, you want to be a part of this ministry. I want to say that before I jump into this, because when I get rolling, I'm going to be rolling. And when we get to talking, we're going to be talking. Do you want to tell them that you're in New York this week? Oh, you yeah. Want to start with that then? At the start, at the, at the time of this live stream, if you guys want to know where I'm going to be, if you're watching in the future, because this is going to be evergreen content. That means they'll watch all the time. Okay. Um, but in the future, if you want to know where I'm going to be, supernaturallife.org. But at the time of this recording, I'm going to be heading to New Jersey and New York. I'm going to leave out on Thursday. I'll be having services, I believe, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be busy bringing revival. And then Texas, I'll see you next after that. So make sure you guys always check out the website. But me and my wife, Heather, have been married. For, yeah, it's getting close to four years. Mm -hmm. We're on three years. Mm -hmm. October fourth will be four years. Mm -hmm. What is our other? I forget our. Uh, what, what is our official <laughs> wedding day? It's Ju our, July. Ah, see, you get, look. You can't. You can't get mad at me for not knowing one. At least I know the one that really matters. It's the last day in July. <clears throat> so July thirty first. That's right. Ah, I won't <laughs> forget now, ladies. <laughs> I have two dates I have to remember because of uh, because of the virus stuff. It messed me up, so I couldn't have an official out there in the public eye wedding. So we waited, and we had another one. So she's 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 blessed. She gets two anniversary celebrations. Are oh, you here? She is a listen. My <laughs> wife is a holiday gal. <laughs> yes, Oof, I loved celebrating your birthday you know, too. You know what my favorite holiday is? My birthday. Did you have a good birthday? I had a great birthday. 
I surprised him. She put me on a party bus. Holy, we turned a yes. dirty bus into a holy bus. Right. Everybody after that is I had anointed. To, I had to. I had to tell. Got my friend Isaiah's back here on the computer. I tell him, "Don't get on the pole, man. You can't back <laughs> We were. We were. We were. That thing. I, I don't. Want, I wouldn't even want to touch that pole. I, I won't talk any further than that. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> But it was a good bus. It had a lot of music, had all this stuff on it. So it was really awesome. And we went to uh, Medieval Times, which is a dinner show thing. It was really awesome. So I really... Very fun. I really enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. But guys, we're going to jump into this topic. And uh, I believe it's going to help many of you guys. So what you, some of you may not know is me and Heather have the wildest testimony ever. Uh, I've shared my testimony many times about how me and her come together through fornication, adultery. This is bad. It was really, really, really bad. And only by the grace of God were we able to make it this far. Uh, we're not ashamed of our story. We share our story because we know how the devil attacks. What the devil meant for bad, God means for good. We have learned how to use what the devil sent as a tax to us to go ahead and turn it around and combat his kingdom. And by the grace of God, we have seen many marriages salvaged and not have to go through the things that we went through. I firmly believe your mistakes can stop somebody else's mistakes. I believe the things that you go through, you can help somebody else not go through. So guys, you don't need our testimony, okay? You don't need our story. I always tell people, God may have given us grace, but I don't know how much grace you guys would get if you chose to go down that same road. Everybody isn't meant to do the same thing, okay? You don't need to write a bad story to have a testimony. You know, King David, people will use his, his story as an excuse to mess up. Don't use his story, man. Don't use his story as an excuse. That's a bad story to use an excuse to mess up. You do not want to use King David's story, okay? Use King David's story as an, uh, uh, as an example of mercy, all right? And you can get mercy, but that doesn't mean you need to go do what he, he does. Because honestly, I'll tell you this. I'll start off with this. I've seen people that get into the premarital stuff. Or they'll go and they'll commit adultery or something like that, and they end up losing their life. They'll lose their life, and I'll talk. I'll talk more, more on that. But just so you guys know, me and Heather, we didn't start right, but we are going to make sure we finish right. It ain't Amen. the way you start; it's the way you finish. And we know people who have started right, yeah, that have fallen mm -hmm. apart, and they don't really even love each other. They don't even appreciate each other. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's really it really don't everything that uh, glitters is in gold. So don't get that twisted just because people look like they start right. They don't finish right. You know, I mean, people that look like they start right, don't finish right. People that start wrong sometimes finish right. I don't understand it all, guys. All I know is God's got a lot of grace and he's got a lot of mercy. Mm -hmm. That's all I know. And if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and you repent and you turn from your sin, God will. Pour his grace and mercy out upon you guys. Make sure that you're continuing to hit that like button, guys. We got to push this one out into the algorithm. I don't know how much the uh, <laughs> algorithm is going to love us on this one, but who cares? We're going to get the truth out there one way or another. Amen. So when I talk about premarital fornication, <laughs> I'm being careful. When I talk about premarital SEX, right, when we talk about this, um, we're going to let you know what spiritually can go wrong with you. I'm going to show you in the Bible where the Bible tells you why you should run from it, what can happen, and, and stuff of that nature. And I'm going to show you some of the spiritual plagues and stuff that can come on you, how you won't get by. There is something, I will tell you this, there is something to S-E-X. There is something to it. There's something powerful about it. The marriage bit is undefiled. Here it is. When a man and a woman become one, when they lock in together, they represent what God looks like because it is the whole being of oneness, of union. Of, covenant. It's yeah. covenant. Yes. Yes, it's, a, it's the man and woman connected and, and, and intertwining and intimacy forming and the passion and the explosion of the goodness that comes with a man and woman who is married coming together. I mean, it's just it's just a beautiful thing when it is seen, when it is seen through the lens of the Bible. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Now, of course, the devil likes to come and pervert it. And you guys don't know, but a very powerful thing is happening in those moments of intimacy in the bedroom. When a husband and a wife come together, I believe all heaven is rejoicing. And here's why I say that, because you are seeing the bridegroom and the bride becoming one. It is a a true representation of, of wholeness. And the anointing, believe it, watch this. When one and another one, a man and a woman who love Jesus Christ, come together, what happens is you see an increase in grace because one can flee a thousand to ten thousand. So it's not only one anointing no more. There's two anointings. Actually, yeah, two anointings. So it's beautiful. And then when the kids come, you can have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many anointings you want in the house? You can have many, <laughs> however many kids you want to have. But we know that the devil likes to pervert what God creates and has as holy and has as pure and has as righteous. So he takes this, 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 the beauty of SEX and he comes and perverts it and he tries to destroy everything about it because he hates it. He hates that a man and a woman are coming together with the Holy Spirit in the middle. He wants to remove God out of that so that we will become carnal, that we become fleshly, and then the devil can thrive off of that. Did, did you guys know that in Satanism and in demonic places and witchcraft cults, all this stuff, one of the things they do is they just have these mass orgies and all these things, uh, these mass sleep around stuff, because what happens is when you do that, the power of the demonic realm increases substantially. I believe this. This is me. I believe, I believe that it actually fuels the demonic kingdom more so than lying, than addiction, than stealing, than all these other things. Now, murder is another one that really brings <clears throat> a lot of power. So those two things I have seen bring a lot of demonic power onto the scene is murder and SEX. Those two things right there bring so much demonic fuel. And it happens so much. If you guys um, read the the word of God and you read the Bible, you will know that, um, well... Anyway, let me, let me actually bring up some scripture. Let me, let me jump into some scripture real fast before I continue. I want to read scripture, guys, and then I'll talk a little bit deeper. So let me bring up scripture. Had a little squirrel moment real quick, so I want to bring up scripture, okay? So 1 Corinthians, it was like the Holy Spirit's like, bring up some scripture. <laughs> All right, so I want to read 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11, okay? Just to show you guys in the word before I continue on talking about fornication and, and all that. But those two things bring extreme demonic power and will cause demons to actually manifest in the physical. So those things cause demons to be able to come into the realm of the flesh. Look, angels can enter into the realm of this of this realm out of the realm of the spirit. They can come in and out. They take on the the form of man. Demons, the demonic realm can do the same exact thing. Demons can step in. Satan can step in. Where there is strong demonic influence and power, where God is pushed away and all that, he comes and he takes advantage of that, you know? So let me go ahead and read this. Isaiah, you can bring it on to me. Um, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, sodomites, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, here's the beautiful part. He's talking to a people that says, and such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. So that's the beautiful thing is that's what you once were. That's not, that isn't what you have to be. But there's these people that I'm talking about are people who still identify with this stuff. That is their identity. They're okay with it. All right. Um, First Corinthians 6, 15 to 20 says, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. 
So if you yoke yourself to a harlot, you become a part of what that harlot carries Mm -hmm. or what that other person carries. You become one flesh with them. And that's why you got to break soul ties. You got to go through all this kind of stuff because you yoke yourself to that. And then you take on their demons too. Mm -hmm. Pretty crazy. Um, Certainly not. Do you not know he is joined to a harlot body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Now listen to this. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. You see, there is a weight to this sin compared to other sins. Now, is all sin the same in the eyes of God? Yes, well, all sin sends you to hell. Absolutely. Thank God for Jesus Christ. But in the realm, in this earth, right, there is weights and balances on different types of sin. Like if you rob a bank, you're going to jail. If you rob a store of some candy, you'll probably get more forgiveness versus robbing a bank, you know? So there's weights and balances to the extreme of sin that you choose here. Uh, In front of God, you can do major sins, you can repent, you can turn from it, but you just might be spending time in jail. You know, and you'll just be in jail as a nice Holy Spirit-filled Christian. So all sins are weighed the same in the eyes of God. But here on the earth, they they carry weight in Satan's eye. Because Satan is under the law. He's condemned. He's messed up. So he uses the power of the law to bring sin out of people's life and then condemn them and utilize them, you know, for his glory. Um, It says, uh, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. But listen, flee sexual immorality. It's the only sin in the Bible you see the words flee. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Fornicators don't make it. People who choose to to live together with somebody outside of marriage, you are in the appearance of evil. You're playing with God. I wouldn't play with God. I wouldn't want to stand in front of God knowing that I've heard messages like this. Even some of you today, you listen to this, you're going to repent from that, and you're going to choose to make things right and make that woman your wife if you want to or make that man your husband and let God's grace come or you're going to separate because you need to. You need to because we don't want to represent Christ wrong. A lot of people say they are Christians, but they are not being obedient to his word, walking out what he wants them to walk out um, by the grace that he has given us, by the, being, being led by his love. So you, you can say with your mouth, oh, I love God and all this, but your actions are portraying something completely different. If you truly love God and you have this knowledge, so it's one thing not to have the knowledge and be learning, but if you have the knowledge and you continue in it, then that's a whole nother situation, you see? And some people will be like, well, we have bills together. Well, (laughs) all right, we'll let your bills mess you up all the way out of here then, you know? Now, if and knowing what I know now from situations and me playing with, with, with the Lord's grace and stuff like that in the past, I know how much mercy I was given. I know how much pride I was in, mm-hmm. how much mess I was in. You see? I didn't care. I wanted to do what God wanted me to do. So I chose to get married. I chose to make things right. I kept hearing the message from people. Either you're going to be there with her or you're going to get out of the house. And I chose to go ahead and we got married and God had to work out the rest. Mm-hmm. You see? But you can't live in that situation, guys. Okay? It's an appearance of evil, and it, it looks bad. And when and now I'm going to use my testimony. I'm going to bring Heather into talking about this. Well, Guys, also like and share, okay? Like and share the broadcast, okay? Don't click off because you're going to get into some good stuff. Uh, is this bearing witness to anybody? I want to see in the comments section. Has it, does, does anybody, have you been in situations like this where you were living with somebody and now you had to change the situation? You know, you had to get married. I'm, I'm interested to even see in the comments what you guys think what you guys think and what your story is, but go ahead, babe. I think it's important to talk about, because I already saw a comment about it, but it's a lot of um, sometimes what people think they can start to over-spiritualize to justify situations by saying that 
marriage is just a piece of paper or, you know, we get married in the eyes of God and, you know, that it's a pagan thing or, you know, rings and marriage certificates like they don't think it's important anymore to justify the situation. So I think that it's important to talk about that, too, to um, add on to what you said, because the Bible tells us to obey the laws of the land. So, you know, are you going to go out and speed? No, because it's against the law. Are you going to go out and and steal? Just like what you were talking about, it's important to also, you know, be under that and it's 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 a commitment, right? So, you know, there's another weight that comes when you want to fully commit to somebody. So, oh, we're married in the eyes of God, but I don't need to get the paper. I don't need to sign that certificate. I don't need to make it official legally, but it's so much easier to just walk away as opposed to going through a a whole process, you know, to, to, you know, hopefully, you know, you will never end it or divorce. Right. But it's, it's a commitment. It's obeying the laws of the land and God honors that. Right. It's like the covenant thing. So uh, maybe you can expound, expand on that better but I hear it all the time and you know a lot of people will say well we're married in the sight of God we live together we have kids together we're basically married so they live like they're married but they don't have the certificate and then they over spiritualize it so what would you say because I think you could maybe expand expand on that a little better yeah I mean it's pretty simple the way I look at it is like this obey the laws of land and I hear what what you said about like people saying oh the certificate oh this oh that and You know, we're married in the eyes of God. Look, first of all, the way the United States has marriage certificates set up, you can still do it under the law of the Lord. Even in the time of Jesus, they had certificates of divorce. Mm -hmm. So marriage was even like that in the the times of the Jews and and stuff like that. So this has always been common. Um, Where people, where, where you go against is like with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they wanted them to bow to idols and stuff like that. You don't obey that yes, law. You yeah, don't exactly. turn your uh, turn your 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 back on God. But if it's righteous laws, if it's moral laws, and and it lines up with the morality of God, then you listen to it. Mm-hmm. You listen to it. Yes. You don't you don't fight against it. I'm telling you, we are. Some people are getting convicted by this one, boy. I'm watching these views up here, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, more people, guys, are living this way than you know. And I knew this would be a touchy subject for some. <laughs> Because I've seen these, th- I've, I'm watching the viewers, they go high and they go back like, oh man, I pray that people are getting convicted. I pray pray this message. I remember when I was living in this kind of stuff, <laughs> I would come across uh, some people that would preach on this. All the time. And my good, I would click off so fast. I'll be on a live stream and people would be like, I'll be like, they're, they're preaching g- condemnation. I don't want to hear them anymore. <laughs> but really what I was saying is I don't want to be, I don't want to be led out of my sin. Yeah. I was like, I want to stay in it. You know, yeah. I, I want to keep enjoying it. I don't want to face the man in the mirror. I don't want to face who I really am. Yeah. So I would see preachers preaching, man. And I click off so fast. Yeah. I would get out of that thing, man. I'd be like, let me find me a gracie, gre- greasy grace guy who would just rub my back and tell me that I'm going to heaven no matter what, you know? And, uh, I'm, I'm a grace guy. Don't let me, don't get me wrong. I'm a wonder, I'm a grace guy for sure. But at the same time, I don't believe grace is a license to sin. Mm-hmm. It doesn't give you the right to stay in it. I'm telling you, I'm watching, I'm watching people come in and out of this thing. Some 20 will come in, 20 will go out. It's so funny to watch. But anyway, I'm going to preach regardless of who's watching. If it's one watching or a thousand, hundred thousand watching, I'm going to still preach this the same way because the truth is the truth and the truth will set you free. free in the mighty name of Jesus. So if you're just tuning in, make sure you guys keep hitting that like button so we can keep getting it to getting it, getting in front of eyes of people that need to hear this message. Now, when me and Heather were shacking up when we were doing the premarital thing that we shouldn't have been doing. I can tell you this as a living testament. One, I lost everything. Like I lost all I had before. I had to start up. I think all I had was my little black car. Mm -hmm. I don't even have that anymore. Mm -hmm. I've gotten rid of pretty much everything from my past and I had to start over straight fresh. If you choose to become a cheater, an adulterer, or fornicator, Trust me, the devil will let you enjoy the flesh, but he's going to take everything around you away. And you'll say God's doing that. Oh, God's just giving you over to your flesh. 
He's going to let the devil whip that flesh so you can so you can come back and remember that you need him and you need to rely on him. And I can tell you, I also became even more evil. Heather can attest to this. Doing being led by that sexual appetite. I'm just going to say the word. I don't care if they like it or not. Being led by that sexual appetite. I became even more evil. It's like I got worse than how I was in the world. Now, I was a violent person in the world, but I came even more violent uh, around Heather and around other people. I became very like, it was bad. It was bad because I was, uh, that, that, that fuel, that thing, that demon that was in me that I allowed in needed to be fueled, needed to be fed by immorality. It needed to be fed by mess. So that's the thing with when you're living that way, that thing needs to be fueled. And th I'll guarantee you this. I'll Holy Ghost guarantee you guys this. And people in the chat speak to me. Watch this. I'll guarantee you when you are cheating or when you are fornicating and you're trying to have a relationship, anger is out the roof. Arguments, misunderstandings is out the roof. Mm -hmm. Depression. Depression is out the roof. Suicide. Thoughts are out mm -hmm. the roof. But watch this. The SEX is also out the roof. No, it's true. Okay. I'm telling you, I'm going to go somewhere here. You love it. You got this like chemistry. Your bodies are connecting. You're like, whoa, this is crazy good. This is the best I've ever had. That appetite, that thing is uh, is being fed. But everything that is around that is 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 destructive and nasty. Mm -hmm. And then... Lies upon lies start to form in the man or woman. Now that thing starts to make you get even more prideful and you'll want to speak to even more people. You'll want to start looking to fill that appetite because eventually what that the enemy will do is make that person grow old. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go and find something else to fulfill that. So he keeps this cycle of destruction. And that's why, you know, every time you start it, here's the thing. Anytime you start a new relationship, it's like you hit the reset button and you start all over again in life. That's why you see people get 70, 80 years old. They've had all these relationships. They've never had nothing. They never had a house. They never had a full uh, a ministry that lasted. They never had anything because they didn't have the ability to stay put. They had mm -hmm. commitment issues. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And then that, that, especially if they're driven by perversion and lust, that thing will stay to have a foundation. But what will happen that, that, th that thing will have a foundation, but what will happen is everything just keeps falling apart all around you. Sexual immorality steals, steals from you. It's one of the best ways that the enemy steps in and just starts to pull everything away from you. I have seen it. Divorce will do it. It'll pull it away. Uh, the, the murder will do it. Mm -hmm. It'll pull it away. Mm -hmm. You see? It just pulls everything away from you. We got some new viewers in. Remember to like the video, guys. Like and share. Let's get these likes up. Come on. And let's continue to share. Um, but I know when me and Heather were together outside of marriage, it was horrible, man. <laughs> even in my, look, even that, I think it's in Revelations 3. Look that up for me, uh, Isaiah, where it says though, uh, in Revelations about Jezebel. Jezebel in Revelation. I think it's Revelations 2.20. 2, or, or, yeah, I think it's 2.20. If you tolerate if that. If you tolerate that spirit, Je Jezebel. What it means is if you're tolerating her ways, she'll bring sickness, plague, famine, yep. disease. All these things will come. Will come and mess you up. I remember I got C-19. Mm, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I got smacked. <laughs> And and now I I don't have it, yeah. praise God. I don't have I, I haven't gotten sick hardly any by the grace of God, but C nineteen, uh, poverty poverty. Oh my goodness, I couldn't get out of poverty. Man, it was bad. I was having to stick my arm with and needles and everything, and <laughs> that's me, a whole me, other yeah, story. to get blood out. You know, yeah. to get get a wedding ring. Yeah. Um, disease. Revelations two twenty right. 220 to 223, if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about, you can go back and read it. But I was uh, in that. I, I remember my car. And and some people would say it was because I was around trees. I knew it, man. I knew it. Unclean spirits bring unclean things. Yeah. 
Unclean spirits bring unclean things. My car, I got in my car and there was a new roach in my car every day. Infested with it was roach. infested. Because you bombed it like three, four like times. Three, yeah, I bombed that thing. I think I dropped a new. It wouldn't nu- go away. Yeah, I dropped a nuclear bomb. <laughs> Cockroach nuclear bomb on that thing. And them things just kept coming back, man. I was like, I couldn't stand to get in my car. I was like, Ugh. and I'll be driving a little friend just. <laughs> I'm like, I'm over this, man. I can't stand this. But plague started to come, crazy stuff started to happen. Mm-hmm. Like I was, I was messed up, man. I would get in there. I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. And I even remember looking back. I remember that this stuff was very common too. Stuff breaks. Yeah. You as weird accidents would happen. Well, you see it in your kids too. Your yeah, your kids. kids start oh, to act out. Yeah. So you guys who have children that are fornicating out there, acting half crazy. Listen, your children start to act yes. out. Bring the mouse over the screen for me. Your children start to act out. They start having the effects. Yeah. I remember I saw him, a poor boy. He 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 completely painted his face like the Joker. And I'm like, what in the world is going on here? And acted like him. With my makeup. And he, and he come to me and he's like, is, ain't I cool? I was like, no, nah, this ain't cool, man. So everything around me, everything around me was getting demonized, including my family. Yes. Men of God, let the girlfriend go. Let her go. Go back to your wife. This is coming from a man that knows. Let the girlfriend go. It ain't worth it, man. It ain't worth it. You might not have the same grace like I had. Go back home. Go back to your wife. Go back to your family. You're watching this right now, and I'm prophetically telling you from the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, go back home. Go back home. Your kids need you. That woman that you've left your husband because he don't emotionally support you enough, get your butt back home. Stop the stop being pitiful. Get back home, and and take take care of the prayer closet and watch your husband change. Change, okay. Get out that get out of that stuff, guys. Stop, men. Stop being simp's. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Don't God. do that. Stop being jellyback. Go be a man. Put your foot down. Tell the devil to get out your home and get out your life. So I <laughs> stop cuffing. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> That's like the an, another term. So there's simp and cuff. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop doing that, man. Stop being crazy. Get back home. Yeah, and singles too. Just because you're yeah, single, singles, we're talking yeah. to you too. It doesn't give you the right. Stop one. Of- stop driving the car before you before you give. See, this is the problem. This is why we sh- we should not. And this is a deep conversation. This is why we should not be having sex before marriage. Yeah. You want? We've been taught to drive the car because you want to make sure the car drives good. Now listen. Cut it out. If it's from God and you 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 let God come and be the one Amen. that is leading and guiding you, the car is going to drive greater than if you drove it before. Because I'm going to tell you this too. Amen. What will happen is you, you were driving that thing like crazy before you were married. <laughs> I'm being PG-13 here. And then you and then you get in to the marriage, and now the car ain't shifting the way it used to. You know what I'm saying? That... <laughs> These guys, Isaiah just took the headphones off. But it, you know why, though? Do you know why? Because yes. it was based on the Perverted. wrong foundation. It was based on lust instead of on intimacy. And yeah. what happens is you got to pray and you got to hope <laughs> that it can be returned to you. Because now your body has been trained a certain way. It's, mm. been, it's, been, it's been trained on this dopamine release and this adrenaline rush. Mm. You completely so have to re- what do you call it? Refocus, revamp, revamp do all that. You got to do all this stuff. You know, you got to do all this stuff to get yourself back right. Guys, if you just tune in, this is some deep stuff, man. Like and share, uh, like and share. But yeah, you you know, you get in the marriage and now y'all fighting. Now you're messy. Now all this stuff. Now he don't look as good. He put a new little bit of belly on. You know, she 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 got stuff, ways that you don't remember. You done made her have kids. Now you got a problem with her body because she had kids. Like, come on, man. If you do, this is the problem with doing it the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Doing it the wrong way. If you would have saw her heart. Amen. If you would have saw his heart, then in Christ, it'll be something that is beautiful and wonderful. So I know it got a little dark. One of my lights died behind me, but it's all right. It's fine. Isaiah, he, he flopped on that one, but it's okay. <laughs> so, so anyway. Uh, I'm all right. I I look a little red, but I'll be okay. (laughs) 
Um, the enemy doesn't want this to go through. Ah, the enemy ain't gonna win. We ain't giving the enemy <laughs> credit for this. If I gotta look like I'm sunburned, I look like I'm sunburned. <laughs> Sorry, I lose dignity for the. I'm really not sunburned at all. I just he's got the temperature. You look up great. On me. So, all right, I think we're good. Don't even try it. I, you'll have me purple up on here, bro. So. <laughs> But, um, yeah, if you do stuff, even you people that are not married, but like my wife said, you're, you're doing stuff, um, just with people. Another thing is you're taking on all their demons. You're taking on all their issues. You're taking on all their problems. Yes. All of them. And, and you're wondering why your problems just got worse and why you're feeling these new emotions. You're feeling these new things. You know, it's um, it's because you've yoked yourself to that person's soul. So you're getting the result of what that person has from the inside of them. Well, you want to say anything to that, babe? Um, yeah, you're the whole, you know, marriage is is holy. It's supposed to be pure. And the marriage bed is supposed to be undefiled. So when you come together with somebody in fornication and lust and you let the enemy win and you let the enemy pervert your mind and pervert your thoughts to thinking that it's okay it totally you know brings in it brings in spirits there's going to be demons and you're going to need deliverance but also like he said you're going to start to deal with things that was never there before and you're sitting there like why do i have this issue what's going on with this and you're you're sitting there like, well, I'm trying to stop. I'm trying to stop. But you need to break free from it. You need to remove yourself from that person because now you are yoked to everything they have. So you get an STD, literally a spiritually transmitted disease, and you have just brought in everything that that person has because it's meant to be yoking yourself one flesh to... Uh, in a holy covenant before God and we are doing it in all the wrong ways. So yeah, there's, I mean, I know we're going to get into our testimonies and everything like that, but um, my testimony, I mean, even before us is just, you know, I think my mom's on here, so (laughs) you know, but I, she's probably heard my testimony, but um, that was part of my testimony is, you know, that, that's something that I dealt with is I had very low self-worth. And as women, when you have very low self-esteem and you don't esteem yourself, you know, in the way that God sees you in the word of God and looking at yourself as fearfully and wonderfully made, you're going to do things outside of your created value. So that's something that I tried to find value in. I tried to, you know, get people to like me or want me by doing things with my body. So, you know, that's something that I was heavily dealing with before I became a Christian. And because I didn't even deal with the internal root of that self-hatred of that self-worth and of the many things on the inside of me, it followed me even when I was a Christian. So some of you ladies might be like, I'm a Christian. Why is this following me? Why can't I stop this? It's because you have to deal with the root of you know, of your value, of your worth in Christ Jesus. And that's something that it took me a long, long time to understand and not wanting the attention of men, but wanting the attention of of God and understanding that we don't have to earn it. We don't have to do anything, but we just have to receive his love that he has for us at the cross. So, I mean, I have so, I have so many testimonies and we, <laughs> we have together, but... Yeah. um. Yeah. Yeah, y'all don't want them roaches, man. What? I'm telling you, you don't want Are those you cock- back to the roaches. You don't want those cockroaches. You don't want you don't want you don't want no frogs. You don't want no invasions. <laughs> you don't want no no lizards running around. I'm telling you guys, this stuff is real, man. I'm telling I mean the devil when he throws a, a right hand, that thing will knock you on your butt, man. And I know some of you guys will be like, devil can't touch me. He's defeated. Yeah, but you're over there sleeping around. He can touch you all day. You touching him, actually. You know, I think it's so funny. I'll see these, these the, what I call, the people are in compromise, right? They're in compromised situations. 
and they are like, yeah, I got the Holy Spirit in me. I'm big daddy, so-and-so. Nobody going to touch me. I said, all right, bro, keep keep doing what you do. Next thing you know, they come back, look like they're 50 pounds lighter. They, they lost all the big daddy muscles. I'm like, what happened to you, homie? Well, you know, man, I went, you know, that girl, she was all, I was like, all right. Okay, <laughs> now you want to listen. Yeah, man, she took all my money, <laughs> you know? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what do you think? <laughs> What do you think's gonna happen, man? When you when you messing around and sleeping with 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 Lilith and Jezebel and yeah. and oh, yeah. Ilnana and whatever 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 that demon's name wants to be, you know? Mm-hmm. So I like I don't understand I don't understand like just just let it go. I do understand it. That's the problem. Yeah. So when I look yeah. at people, I'm like, don't do it, bro. I'm like, don't do it, sis. Don't do that. Don't do it to yourself. You're gonna waste five to 10 years of your life and them demons are going to eat you up, man. They're going to eat you up. Watch this. I want to prophesy. I want to say something real quick. A word of knowledge. Somebody's watching this right now. I believe you are, uh, you're, you're, uh, I'm going to say, I got to say colors guys. There's no colors in the kingdom, but there's a black girl that's watching this right now. You are in the house. I see you have two kids. Watch the chat. Now she's going to show up. Two kids with a man that you were living with. He's out there. He's running the drug game. He's doing crazy stuff. You you feel like the Lord has told you to stick in there and you can save him. But you're living in the house situation. And I want to tell you this prophetically. That man will only come to the Lord when you leave the household. And when you get yourself in a place of consecration before God and clean up your life and allow the Lord to help you and help your children, help your children and allow God to clean that man up and then allow God to bring who's supposed to be in your life to come. He won't leave your children without bread. He won't leave you without bread. Make sure that you're hearing this message right now. Go ahead and get out. And and there's somebody watching this. I saw by the spirit a brown-haired white lady. You're in an abusive relationship right Mm -hmm. now, but you love this man. He's your man. And you love him. And you've been together with this man three years. He's your he's your Romeo. He's your he's your everything. But all of a sudden Romeo's and turned into Lucifer. Listen, but you still saw the Romeo, so you think he's gonna stay there. Okay? Let the man go. That three year relationship ain't worth fifty years of heartache heartache. Let that man go. In Jesus' name. Abuse ain't worth it. Abuse is not worth it. There's somebody else watching this. You're in one of these relationships and you can never get your bills paid on time. You always have your bills late. It's because you have been in fornication and the enemy has an open door to continue to steal from you. Steal from you. Change the situation. Stop fornicating. Allow the grace of God to come over you and change everything and change everything. I'm telling you, I know this from the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus name, make the changes, make the changes. Um I've also noticed this, guys. When a person is driven by lust and that spirit overtakes them, you see their body composition change. You will see their facial structures change, you'll see their bodies change. That spirit morphs them into something. And then after you get with the person, when you get with the person, what happens is their body completely changes to something else. It's because the the enemy wants somebody to look a certain way and give this facade, and then that person changes. It's like the facade they were walking in are not there anymore. So that's why it's important that you're not led by lust to meet lust, because if you're led by lust to meet lust, then you're going to see that everything was fake and nothing was real. And I will say that when I was led by that spirit, I put on probably a facade for this woman of God right here uh, in the beginning because I was not true to who I was. I had a perverse spirit. Of course, now me and me and my beautiful wife over here, we're walking true to who God has called us to be. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it was just two broken people, big messes. Right. It was all fake. It was all, all right. fake. Yeah. It wasn't real, yeah. you know, but, and we had to have the grace of God come on us and restore us and help us. 
Yeah. And praise God that we're here today the way we are. And we're here as a testimony to tell you guys, you don't need to fornicate, man. Th- you, you don't need to have premarital sex. You don't need to do these things. I think it's important to understand that this doesn't just happen overnight. No, no. So if you think you're above being de- deceived, if you think you're above, you know, falling into that, you you're already deceived so it starts with the the small foxes that spoil the whole vine right like even daniel will tell you in in that season of his life and his testimony he didn't just wake up one day and say i want to go commit adultery you know it started with little things it even on on the screen so a lot of you may be like i've been with the same woman for 15 years and i've never committed adultery or or the woman uh, you know, I've been with my man for 10 years. We have four kids. You know, we, we've never done anything. But yet the man's watching the P word, P-O-R-N, you know, yeah. the man's watching that or the woman's out there getting emotional support from another man or even using things to please herself. That is all under the umbrella of immorality that will eventually not be enough to satisfy you that will lead you into a you know that physical in person adultery and fornication so um don't ever think that you're you're above being deceived or tempted or you have to stay humble and mm-hmm. and meek in the sight of god and um you know blessed are the meek in spirit you know so um do you want to say something about that i thought no, oh, oh, okay. I no, didn't know if you no, wanted I'm to just, chime I'm in. I'm just looking over the comments and stuff. Um, Guys, make sure you continue to like, okay? <laughs> We're doing good. I believe we can break that thousand mark. Keep going. So, yeah, that's just so important because, you you know, that is just as bad if you're watching it on the screen or, or even, you know, the, the devil can get so perverse that you're like, well, I'm watching it with my wife. It's all... It's no, it's all a no, no. Right. So don't get it twisted that where you're, you know, you feel like you're all good, but you got the side things going on because those are the little things that eventually lead to the thing that you you don't want. Right. Or you never thought, oh, I would never do that. I would never cheat on my wife or I would never cheat on my husband. That will lead you to those things. So um, I think of the big reason of how we came out of what we did while we were believers is because of the transparency that we, we are not ashamed, you know, Romans one 16, we're not ashamed of the gospel, but not being ashamed of the gospel is also not being uh, ashamed of your testimony because that's how we overcome. And there's power in the testimony. And there's so many people that, you know, would never share so bluntly and plainly what we have online and, you know, in person and to, you know, very well-known people and anybody, you know, for that matter. And we've seen so many women, you know, come forward, so many men come forward and even well-known people that will confess and come forward and their sin because of what we shared. We don't try to hide anything about our past. And, um, so yeah, it's the little things that will eventually get you to, oh, well, this is okay. This little thing is okay. This little thing is okay. It's like bait, right? The, the enemy is baiting you into that, that bigger thing, which you think is small. So, um, that's very important. I think. Yeah. Somebody on here was saying, what if your husband, uh, cheats, should you, and should, can I leave? Well, y- mm. you can leave. You can leave, but ask, why are you leaving? Yes, you've been done wrong. He's put you in second place and stuff like that. But can you fight? Do you still have breath? Do you still have a willpower? Now, I know you've been fighting. I can't. I've been in the situation. I I know what it is to give up. I know what it is to get walked out on. I know what it is to get cheated on. I know what it is to cheat. I know all, all around. I've been on each end of it. I've been on every end of the spectrum. Knowing what I know now, I would stay in and fight until I could not fight anymore. I would I would fight and I would win because if you've been married for many years, starting over after mm-hmm. such a struggle and such a battle, it's tough. Is there life after that type of marriage? Of course, you, so you can, but really you have to consult consult the Lord Jesus on it, man. What what how where do you want to go with it? You know, what do you do? Do you believe that you are going to have that grace? Do you believe that you are going to have that mercy, or is there some selfishness in your heart? You know, is there selfishness in your heart for the reason of what you want to do it? You know, so, you know, you got to really 
ask yourself, is this for selfish reasons? Is this for the right reasons? My goal in this live is to get people to think, is to get people to go, is this situation I'm in worth it? Statistically today, less people are getting married. More people are getting married well into their 30s, statistically. And more people are living together outside of marriage than ever before. There's more people shacking up than ever before. I'm going to tell you, there's many people that have already been on this live stream and clicked out of this live stream because they have been convicted by listening to what we're saying. They don't want to hear this topic because they're in the situation. I said this earlier. But it's because it's such a mess. It's such a mess right now, even in the body of Christ. Well, even the divorce rate the divorce for the rate church. Is high. For the yeah. church even is like over 50%. It's crazy. Yeah. So these are the times we're living in, and this is why we have to come and, and say these things and talk this way and tell the truth. Regardless if you're going to like us or not, we have to teach the truth. We have to tell the truth. I know that God thinks this way. I know this is what God wants. He wants us to fight for our spouses, for our children, for our homes. You know, I come from a broken home. I'm a result. My life is a result of being in brokenness. My, my wife knows my mom and my dad. If you're watching mom and dad, hi, I love you. You're a testimony to my life. Praise God. But she knows my mom and dad, and she knows that I. she sees where I come from. So she sees where a lot of my um, attitude and a lot of uh, how I wasn't able to healthily communicate. Like me even sitting here communicating with you guys like this, old Daniel didn't have these capabilities. I didn't know how to dialogue and communicate. I didn't know how to hold a conversation appropriately because I grew up in a broken home, right, where I couldn't. Yeah, see see a healthy conversation. Emotional intelligence. Yeah, emotional <laughs> intelligence. My wife used to say, you don't have no emotional intelligence. And I'd be like, yeah, that don't make no sense. There is no such thing. <laughs> and I didn't even realize that it was a real thing because I heard somebody literally after that, the Lord was speaking, somebody just brought up emotional intelligence. I was like, what the and world is And that's not this? a normal thing. That <laughs> No, man. I was like, all right, God, I hear you, man. Come on. <laughs> Woo, thank you. Lord. Ah, but yeah, but um. Yeah, I didn't grow up to see this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't, I didn't grow up to be able to see like mom and dad having healthy. Mm -hmm. I, I saw fighting. I saw mm -hmm. disagreements. I mean, we had some glory moments here and there, but like, I just grew up in dysfunction. So I was a dysfunctional person. That's yeah. why. That's that's why, we see you. I, my life growing up was, just I, I just couldn't communicate, mm -hmm. and it's only listen to me. It's only by the grace of God that I'm sitting here today, and because of this wonderful woman of God, that I'm sitting here today able to communicate and to now hold somewhat of a emotional intelligence conversation. You, you've just amazed me over the years of how far you've come. Yeah. As a father, as a husband, and just as everything, I think that leads to the question of how do you form a healthy relationship after being in sin? So you just have to start all over because yeah. we couldn't even take the things that, you know, while we were in that sin, we couldn't take it into a marriage because it was all perverse. It was all unhealthy. Obviously, you know, there's some knowing each other, but you really didn't know each other the way that we have now and being able to, um, you know, understand the holy holy covenant holy commitment and being able to work through each other um in ways that we couldn't do before because it was built on the wrong foundation it was founded on the wrong thing so how you you know so maybe you know today you're like well that I, that's me i'm in that sin and i either i want to get married after this or you know i want to make it work so it is possible to make it work if you want to take that step and make that commitment. There is grace. So don't don't hear us saying, you know, just there is there's choices, but it's either get out or or ma marry that person, marry that man or woman of God. And you will have to, to start over. And what do I mean? You have to start over in in a lot of healing that's going to need to take place, a deliverance for mm -hmm. sure counseling like like maybe marriage counseling and what do i mean not necessarily by psychologists but of trusted authorities in your life of your pastors of men or women of god that have a good marriage that you're around in that sense um i remember you know we've 
talked to a lot of people since then that have had good married my my parents my parents actually speak a lot into our lives um when we're when we're going through something they've been married for 30 years and i it's just it's just a blessing so um yeah it is possible to to have healthy but you have to be humble in a place that you're willing to be restored we've both had to come to the end of ourselves and realize it wasn't just him and it wasn't just me we both had a lot of issues and we both had to have a lot of transformative things that only Christ can do. I can't heal areas in his heart and he can't heal areas in my heart. Only Christ can do it. So that's something I've had to learn even over, you know, the years that we've been married is that I have to go to prayer about a lot of things. I can't force things. And I notice that's the biggest result sometimes. And, and, you know, not being not that I'm not being heard or anything like that, but um, Christ can only do the healing and bring the, the re- certain revelations that we need. And obviously it can come through each other, which we, we do a better job at listening to each other now. But um, yeah, but if if the if the the uh, solution is to get out, it, it's get out. And, you know, just God will give you grace in the meantime, if you make that choice to either get married or get out. He'll find you a place. He'll supernaturally provide for you. He'll supernaturally put people in your path that you can stay with and you can be safe and you can, you know, get that restoration that you need. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I know that I was not presented covenant. I think one of the problems is, is when you come from broken places, um, fornication is covenant. It's, it's a way to trap somebody, you know, it'll make them love you. You know, if they'll, like what wow. I'm, I mean, I hate to say it like this, but if they like what I'm putting down, they'll stay with me. That's wow. kind of like how the enemy will speak to you. Uh, versus if you're, if you see a covenant marriage, if you see a marriage before God, you'll see the prayer, you'll see the reading of the word, you'll see the healthy dynamics and stuff like that. And then you'll go, oh, this is what it takes to keep a, a strong marriage. This is what it takes to keep things to get held together and stuff like that, you know? So, I didn't see that. So even growing up in that broken home and environment led me into being a fornicator, led me into the drugs mm-hmm. and the rebellion and all mm-hmm. that stuff. But seeing if I would have had a mother and father who was really actively seeking God in front of my face, I would be a I believe I believe I would be a whole different animal today. You know, which I am now mm-hmm. because I got to know my father. Yeah. You know, I got to I <laughs> I got to know my father and I got to walk uh, out of that old lifestyle and stuff like that. By the way, guys, if you're just tuning in, remember like and share, like and share. Okay, let's get these likes up, guys. Let's get these likes. I want to see these likes. Uh, let's roll them up. Let's continue to push them out, guys. And uh, see, that's what I'm saying. As soon as one of you guys smash the like, here comes more people. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. YouTube be nice to me now. Facebook be nice in Jesus' name. This is a good topic that the whole world, even the unbelievers, need to hear. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Listen, I want to tell, I want to tell young people this too. That body, I'm 36, okay, I'm still young, but that body that you've been using to seduce people will only last so long. Don't let your body be the reason people stay. Let your heart and your 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 life before God be the reason people stay. All right, I've seen people get married to. I'm gonna use man and woman. I'm gonna use, I'm the man, so I'm gonna talk. I've seen men marry women, uh, young, and then 30 years down the road they want to throw them away because they don't look like they did when they were younger. Well, guys, it's because you didn't get their heart and you were only bound to a body. You were looking at a body. And maybe the body would stay looking good if you treat it good. Mm, wow, that's powerful, though. Maybe if the man was treating that woman the right way, her body would stay right. Maybe if the woman was treating the man the right way, maybe his body would stay right. You see, maybe the temples would be yeah. taken care of. I do want to say you do look a lot better nowadays <laughs> than you did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was struggling back in the day. <laughs> I look at some of the old videos, man, and I'm like, praise the Lord. At least one thing she did was show me how to get a haircut, trim up, and uh, stop eating so much sugar. She me out. <laughs> I was struggling, man. I was in my 20s looking 40. You, now I'm yeah. in my 30s looking Crazy. 20. Ain't that wonderful? And your style's come a long way, too. Yeah, yeah. She's helped me. No 
put a chain around my neck, a black shirt, oh, and a gosh. watch, and I'm good to go. Uh, <laughs> yes, I will That's be powerful. praying for people, guys. I will be. I see some of you saying, ask me to pray for uh, marriages, suffering in marriages and stuff. Yes. My, uh, the biggest goal, uh, like I said, is, is for me to come on here and keep you guys from making the mistakes that I made from, you know, falling into stuff. Like, I'll, I'll give an example. So I got young men around me. I have Isaiah. He's sitting right over here. He's the guy that let the light go out. It wasn't his fault, by the way. And then I have, I have Keegan in there. I have Mark. I have a few, few, I have a few unmarried, uh, young men in this ministry. Ladies, calm down. Still training them. They're going to be ready soon. Uh, but one of the things I had to get all of them to understand is you need to be able to fend for yourself before you bring a woman into the picture. And you got to know that you can provide for that woman when you, she comes in too. A lot of times men will find a woman and expect the woman to fund him. Mm. Wow. Speaking from experience. Yeah, from experience and f expect the woman to fund him. And I'm going to tell you, men, there's no fulfillment in your woman providing for you. A man is a man and a man loves to provide. Am I saying that the woman can't make more money than the man? I'm not saying that. Right. right. I'm saying the man should have the ability to, if something was to happen with that woman who is providing, to still be able to provide. So there's nothing wrong with the woman making the money. So don't hear me wrong. Okay. But men, and, and I know things happen sometimes like a man will lose his job. There's grace in those windows. That's not saying that you're not going right. to, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Okay. So there's grace. If the man loses the job, I understand that things happen, but the man should have the capacity to go and get a job again. Some men, some of you men, listen, you come into ministry, watch this, you come into ministry and you tell the woman, Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm called to ministry. I don't need to work. I've been there, done that. It don't work either. And you're telling your wife to, to bust butt mm. and you over here out there praying for the sick and she's suffering. She's suffering. I was that guy. I know about that. Suffering. No, get your butt a job and minister on the job and provide for Amen. your family. Amen. Stop thinking ministry. You got to be standing behind a pulpit with an open Bible. You know how many overweight, no offense to overweight people that got health diseases. I'm not talking about you, but if you're eating Twinkies, then you got to get over it. But what I'm saying is overweight pe preachers with their Bibles open and 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 their, their wife is over there working their butt off. Church won't grow because you're out of order. You're not in order. You don't even take care of the woman at home. You take care of your Twinkies more so. And, and, and things are just jacked. Things are just jacked, man. So, so young men, you don't get married until you know that you can provide for a household, that you know you can provide for a woman. And listen, look, my wife's going to say, oh, my gosh. But that SEX game don't last the whole time. You better be able to have a, a heart, an emotional heart, because the woman wants the emotional aspect. Yeah. If they say they don't, they're Jezebel. Run. Because women are made to receive emotion, emotional comfort, emotional support. That's where they're, they thrive in the bedroom is when you are giving them emotional support. Okay? That's where yeah. they get it. Give it emotional support. So I'm helping some of you guys with SEX education right now. You will be so wonderful. We're going to do a video on that too one day. But you, you will thrive a lot better if you can emotionally help your wife because I'm going to tell you <laughs> it may have been good in the beginning but now she mad because you can't you ain't giving her what she really wants all right? <laughs> all right well then I can I guess I can piggyback off of that and <laughs> say ladies men Daniel tells me well used to tell me all the time I'm better at it now he's like all I want as a man is respect so the man wants a little respect. bit of R-E-S-P-E-C-T <laughs> Yeah, then he would bust out in the song. No, <laughs> but no, um, he wants respect as the man, um, meaning in, in godly order and, and submission. And I've talked about this before and not like a dictator and not like, you know, anything like that, but just being in godly order and and respecting his position. Really, that's what it means, like respect his position of him, you know, being over the household, over the wife, over the, the children and and that kind of thing 
and um and then the emotional support for the women so i think that's the two biggest things that can help the marriages and help you refrain from looking to these outside sources from looking on that phone or the computer looking for that outside man or woman that will stop you in your tracks mm. is just these simple simple things is uh is that so um I, ha- I had to add that too because <laughs> you know it's important yeah. for both both sides to line up and we're we're not perfect at this by any means so but it's it's important to talk about because you know it's yeah, go ahead. You know, you know what I do to make my wife happy. Oh, here we go. I, do. I grab that Swiffer <laughs> and I look at her and I'm like, "He's like, want to come watch me? Want to come watch me put the wet thing on the Swiffer?" <laughs> I say, "Look, baby, I'm I'm sweeping." No, you literally said that to me. <laughs> want to come watch me vacuum or want to watch me vacuum? <laughs> what if I wash a cup? <laughs> And, oh, and, tear. Yeah, and and then and then she'd be like, mm, "What up, big 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 daddy? What up?" And I'm like, "Yeah, ain't nothing like a good mopping." You know? So man, you pick, yo, you pick that. Hey, you pick that mop up. You pick that cup. Oh, I did something really good today. I picked the phone up and called the plumber. <laughs> so I that didn't, did man sometimes stuff. Sometimes I'm like, sometimes I'm like, babe. Call the plumber. But I say, you know what? I'm calling the plumber because I don't know nothing about plumbing. I ain't messing no septic tank. No, I ain't messing. You couldn't none. have done that. Yeah. No, no. I ain't but I called the plumber and I yeah. said, babe, ain't that hot? I'm a, I called the plumber. I called another man to do something I couldn't do. Amen. And I I don't want to YouTube it because I'll probably have a whole new fountain in the yard. No, you couldn't have it. done that job. That was no, crazy. No. So I was, uh, I called the plumber today and it was good. I woke up, we didn't have no water in the house. I was like, oh my goodness, this ain't good. It's going to be a sweaty mess all day, but we got it fixed by the grace of God. Amen. I want your plumbing to uh, go good. So ain't, not, ain't <laughs> nothing like a man that can move a Swiffer. Just remember that, guys. <laughs> and, yeah, and the nighttime will be wonderful, wonderful. So he said, be the plumber. Yeah, I, I I don't know, man. I can I maybe can scrub a toilet, but plumbing ain't me. Maybe I'll have to hire my my man Isaiah over here to go in the septic tank. So I ain't worried. To go uh, in the septic? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, guys. The goal of this, like I said, is just don't get into fornication. It listen, I'll, and I'll say this too, it will lead you to hell. It says the footsteps of the adulterous mm-hmm. immoral woman will lead you to hell. And not only spiritual hell and physical, and not only physical hell, but spiritual hell, meaning your life will be a living hell when you get with the adulterous woman, especially if there's never no repentance and there's no turning from it. So remember that. And the adulterous man, too. It works both ways. So don't go to hell, guys. All right? If this message has touched your heart, repent. Turn from that wrong believing. Turn back to to God. Some of you have been walking with God. Some of you have have been doing it for years and you just you fell into a bad ditch. Grace is here, guys. Stand back up. Get out of that ditch. Do something, do something right with your life. Don't don't fall into the same trap of the enemy all the time. Don't let your old ways come up. Don't let arguments in the marriage or in a relationship mess you up. Okay. Somebody asked a question in here. Uh, they a- asked, they said, uh, what if we're engaged? Mm-hmm. What if we're engaged? Well, get married, like ASAP. Go to the court. Do whatever you got to do. If you're living together, go to the court. Because obviously, here's what happens. Sometimes you'll be like, I'm sleeping on the couch. Man, listen, I'm going be, to be straight up. People will be like, I'm sleeping on the couch. But he in there watching you change. He in there seeing you in your nightgown. He's seeing you <laughs> walk out the shower in the Night. towel. He's seeing whatever you you got going on, you know. <laughs> That's true. He's seeing he's seeing all that stuff. You seeing him walk around in his tank top and his boxers. Might as, <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Let's just call it like it is. <laughs> let's just call a spade a spade. Also, guys, remember continue to like and share. But let's just call it like it is. You're watching all these things, and you're you're claiming that I'm just sleeping on the couch. No, you ain't. You dreaming on the couch. You sleeping on the couch. You say, I'm downstairs. He upstairs. No, somebody went to get some coffee downstairs in their boxes. 
I'm telling you, man, I know this stuff. I know what's going on. You know, you're not tricking me and you definitely ain't tricking God. Get right. Get right. And if not, he's upstairs doing something to himself, thinking about you. She downstairs doing something to herself, thinking about you. I know, man, it's better just instead of burning with passion, living in the same household, not married, Mm -hmm. make it right. But actually, go get some counseling, Mm -hmm. some marriage count. Go get some healing and deliverance. Separate for a season. Get healing and deliverance. Then come together and get married. I'll say that. Get get help. Get help. Don't don't let your grace run out on you. Yeah, it's avoiding the appearance of yeah. evil. And if you don't feel right, like if you can't go to church and be like, yeah, you know, you know, you if you feel condemned every time you talk about it, it's probably because it's not right. So don't try to justify it because you aren't having intimacy or you're not fornicating, but you're living together and you're not married. It's avoiding the and abstaining from the appearance of evil and there's a reason you feel weird to talk about it or why you can't you know um not that you should keep it a secret but it's because it's not right it's not the foundation that you need to be built on and it's not something that is you know okay necessarily in in the eyes of god so yeah and I see we got a couple up here that that Devin and Undra they are in the ministry they've been with us for a long time we saw them get married you know, they, they were obedient. They got married. I remember we told them to, and now they're blessed, you yes. know, and, uh, you know, we were in that situation. <laughs> I mean, we're blessed. So we did it wrong guys. And let us be your example of grace. God is giving you grace right now. He's saying, get it right, mm. <laughs> get it right, make it right. Plus you want your generations to be blessed. Yeah. You want your generations to be blessed. Never stressed. If you choose to walk in sexual immorality, If you choose to walk in sexual immorality, the devil will have free reign at attacking your life. I'll go ahead and give you this, this guys. I'll give you some uh, tips really quick to how the devil comes in and attacks, okay, when you're fornicating. Sickness. I've seen people get diseases that they didn't even have no proof that a disease was there. Sickness, disease, um, sabotage. Death, poverty, um, children are chaotic, out of order. What's some other stuff? Plagues, famine, homelessness. My goodness, um, people turning on you completely. Church world turning on you completely. <laughs> thoughts of unaliving yourself. Uh huh. All these thoughts will start coming to you. Like, these are things that will happen. Arguments between you and that person you're in an immorality with becoming abusive physically and verbally. And the only thing that will be good is the SEX between y'all. That's it. And even that might grow bad because you'll get sick of seeing the person that's abusing you. Now you don't even like them anymore. But just remember, you heard it here first. Here's what I'm going to do for you guys. Uh, I want to give you a chance to sow into what me and Heather have preached today and taught you guys. It says Galatians 6, 6 says, share all good things to those who teach you the word of God. I want to give you a chance to sow. This is, listen, sow for your marriage. What I'm going to do, you people on here who are dealing with these situations in marriages and stuff, is you sow your seed right now. Okay, I'm going to bring the thing up. Please do not click off. Do not click off, guys, because I'm going to come back. Me and Heather are going to answer some of your questions over here in the chat. Okay, we're going to literally answer your questions in the chat. So I know people love to click off when giving time comes and you love to run away and you like to come back after the giving's over. That's actually what you should be doing right now by the grace of God. And I'm going to read you guys prayer requests off of Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal. And if you give another way, I will pray over your giving even after this. Uh, so if make sure you put a message on your giving, okay? So go ahead, Isaiah. Isaiah is going to play a song. He's going to bring the giving up and we will be right back to ask answer any questions you guys have. I got your presence on my mind. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I feel like it's been like that all the time. 
the resurrection power living in me that's the cry. I need a stress, the trust come with tests, yeah. Moving like a Tesla, I got some moves they bless, yeah. Shine that light on your flesh like fair. Sipping on blood, yeah, we sipping on red. I'm capping my rhyme and I do what I said. Revival is here, this the start of the end. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. Tell me the truth and I promise you did. God is in real, then bro, tell me what it is. Spirits moving even in the kids. If you think it's fake, then it is what it is. Ain't no cap in my rap, I tell you right now, got spirit moving. If you not live for Christ, then you ain't winning, boy. You to be reading your uh, giving really fast for you guys who did give, and then me and Heather will answer the guy, you guys' questions who don't run away when giving comes up. So let me see. Uh, I got to wait for a second for, for, for the, this to catch up. Ah, there we go. Here it is. All right. Keegan said, for, oh my goodness, Keegan, Keegan Burkhart, for my future wife and marriage. Ah, Amen. Keegan, we pray that you have your future wife and marriage in the mighty name. He's literally in our kitchen. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That guy's, he's funny. Amen. Bitty, I pray right now blessings over you, your marriage and ministry in Jesus' name. Yes. Mark, I pray for... Mark Coba, he says, for confirmation of his calling. It's funny because I feel like this teaching thing on your life, as soon as you said it, it's like pastoral teaching is really what dropped in my spirit. And I know there's a little evangelistic thrust there too, but I really, I feel like when I say your name, I feel like a, this, this passion to know his word, which means the Lord wants to take you, take you into, um, take you into, um, Teaching, teaching the saints in the deep mm -hmm. things of the word, you know. Um, yes, Daniel, I pray financial breakthrough for you, man. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, may you be blessed. May you be blessed. Let me go over here, guys. Huh? Who? Okay. I want to pray and say by Samar. Uh, she said, seed for marriage and proposal free from anger and hurt and lust and perversion, backstabbing, lies and manipulation. Mm -hmm. May you be broken free from all of those demonic attacks on your life right now. In Jesus mighty name, be free in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, Beverly. May the Lord bless you all the way out there in Australia. Miretta. Petraj, I believe, I pray right now that the Lord will give you the godly husband that will treat you right, honor you, and love you in the mighty name of Jesus and represent Jesus well to you in Jesus' name. Uh, yes, you can. I will pray right now, Vicky, for, for uh, you to receive that Boaz in your life in due time, in due season. I don't. I, I was really. It was really weird. I, I saw. I saw two months actually come into my into the spirit as I, I saw March and April. March, April. And I feel like the Lord is saying you will march to April, and is something significant with the, the time of April. I believe that there's going to be a significant connection. Now I don't like to do mates, dates, and babies, but I'm just telling you. I'm feeling this by the spirit. I don't usually do this. Just hear me out. There's something significant with the, the with April, January, February, March, and it's the fourth month. Mm -hmm. Okay, March fourth, April, March fourth, March fourth to April. 
just seeing, yeah, something very significant with that month. Very significant with that month. Pay attention to this, okay? And I want you to testify. I believe somebody will be marked, or somebody, by the grace of God, and I'm saying this, and Lord Jesus, I go in by faith. April is a month for you. And I believe somebody will be marching into your life. In Jesus' name. I think March is the heart preparation, and April is when things will birth forth. Ah, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, let me check the uh, other one, and then me and Heather will be answering questions for you guys. Just give me one second. As I bring it up, just hang in there, guys. Okay. Devin Coffey. Let me see. I pray blessings over you, man, even though you didn't put anything in there. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Yes. I pray right now, Roxanne, that your husband Noah will come to know the Lord. Y'all will walk hand in hand. I feel like there was some hurt within the church with your with your uh, husband, uh, Nolan. I feel like he had some church hurt at some time. It's kind of just kept him back and made him like he saw something with a preacher. Are you on? If you're on here, bear witness to this for me, Roxanne. I feel like your husband suffered some church hurt, and it caused him to really question the things of God. He seems to be very, uh, from what I'm feeling in the spirit, kind of like, uh, you know, these preachers this, these preachers that. I believe the Lord is going to definitely break that off of him, and he's going to become the man of God that he's supposed to be. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you for Caitlin Jensen. I pray for her husband to be delivered from every demonic spirit that is leading him into unrighteousness. May his heart be softened, and may true repentance be brought into his life. May he had a, a, a broken heart and a contrite spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Uh, Isaiah, okay, new rocks, Will Bush. Yes, he changed religions. That, I, I, that's what I was feeling. Something happened in Christianity, Roxanne, that that moved him out. She's up there, new on Facebook. So something happened in Christianity that uh, that pushed him out. He saw something that really hurt him and disturbed him. But don't fear not. Stay firm, and you, yeah. the believing wife, will walk him back into where he's supposed to be. All right? I pray right now, Caitlin, for full restoration. Uh, of your marriage and his walk with Christ. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, I just don't want, I want to make sure I ain't missing nothing. I saw somebody said you sewed in Cash App. Let me look. Let me look. Yeah, you did. Let me make sure I get all of you guys. Okay. Um, Shana Mosley. Shania Mosley, man, Shania, you, you're deep. I see you every time. I just can tell you this. You're going to see breakthrough for the seeds that you, you, are, you are planting in the ground, for sure, in Jesus' mighty name. Keep your heart burning bright. Amen. Amanda, may you be blessed. Yes. Uh, Sarah Holm, may you get the desires of your heart because it's God's desires. May the will of the Lord be upon your life, in Jesus' mighty name. Isaiah's Poche Corteriol, he said, for the future wife, may the Lord bless you with a, a, a blessed, amazing woman of God that will walk hand in hand, side by side. Who knows? She could be watching now. <laughs> Let's pray the blessing say. of the Lord Jesus upon your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's almost time, man. You're getting to be an old man now. 25. <laughs> Father, I think I'm 36, so that means I'm really up there. Uh, destiny, I pray for your relationship uh, to be blessed and for your future marriage and ministry to be blessed. May the Lord bless your seed and give you the desires of your heart. In Jesus' name. Yes, Nicole, I'm going to pray right now. Put your hand on your stomach. I command right now every perverse, unclean spirit to be released from your life now. I command any spirit spouse, anything that has come against her, anything even from when she was young, and anything bad that happened to her, I break your power over her now. I command you to come up and out of her life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody else who is giving, I pray right now in Jesus' name that everything that they type, everything that they put, Lord, that you will, you will bless their seeds, you will bless their requests. 
Lord, I thank you so much for the grace of God uh, on these seeds. May they go from glory to glory, and may they succeed in all they do. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Somebody, Courtney said, I feel so unattractive during pregnancy. My poor husband is being nice about it. I know, hey, my, my wife is getting more fine the more pregnant she gets. I just, I find myself drooling sometimes. I gotta wipe my mouth. I understand what you mean, though, Courtney. Oh, she. I have my days. I just lay back and I'm like, hmm. What? She is beautiful. And then I see my, my boy. My boy just right there in the belly. Like, make a man, make a man real happy. I say, look at that woman carrying that, that glorious vessel. That future son right there. Babe, what's wrong? You're a hot pregnant woman. What am I supposed to say? Courtney, something that will help you is looking at the apps where you can see. I don't know if this is your first child or not, but like looking at the app and seeing what's being formed on the inside of you and realizing it's all worth it because, you know, I I go through I'm really getting into the phase now where I am I'm getting bigger and everything feels weird and it's like harder to turn over in the bed when I'm sleeping and I'm like what's going on and I feel so unattractive but it's when I see on that app and like when I go into the to my midwife to see my child it's like wow this is all worth it and you are literally God is forming that boy or girl on the inside of you so um yeah so I hope that I know. <laughs> I hope that helps. I try to give you a practical along with Daniel's commentary of how I how I looked. <laughs> but guys, I I can't say everything. I think I got to just keep it to myself. So, husbands that have had pregnant wives, are you lying though? Are you being Are you being serious? Am I being serious? Look at this face. I'm being so serious. Amen. Look at her feet. They're, they're moving crazy right now. Because I just want to. You don't think? I think you're beautiful. No, 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 no. But, you know. <laughs> you are beautiful. I don't. Thanks. I'm I'm serious. I know. Okay. Amen. She, she don't be watching, man. She If she'd open her eyes, she'd catch how much I'm watching her. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my birth at home. Yeah, she's doing a home birth. You guys can ask questions now. We're answering them. <laughs> <laughs> women love men will honor. Yeah, women won't love men will honor. That's them. right. That's right. Some people are watching it from far back, so they're catching up. You know. You know. I'm a. Uh, Sent Zell, need prayers to repair a broken heart, was living with someone, and restoration to my life and what God to bring. Yes, I pray right now, Velma, that you will have the restoration you need, and I pray rest that the, the man of God that God has for your life uh, will come into your life. Mark, I pray that the Lord will bring you that woman of God that you're supposed to have in Jesus' Amen. name. In Jesus' name. My husband left me and the kids three years ago, and I've been waiting for him to come back since, but he's not interested. It's time for me to let it all go. We are still legally married. I would say fight till you have no more breath left within you. Fight. Get in that prayer closet. Continue to pray. If he, you know what? Listen, I'll just listen to the Lord on it. That's all I'm going to say, because I'm not going to make somebody stay in hell either. You know, just, just listen to the Lord. I, I don't condone divorce, though. I condone redemption and reconciliation, you know. You have vacuum to your wife. <laughs> you have to vlog it. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about vlog what? The uh, home birth? I am. I've already told him I am. Yeah, but I told him she, <laughs> some some of that stuff ain't going to be in there. Some people and be, all the guys think it's some, so weird. No, no, no. Some people be going hardcore. And I told nobody's video recording my wife in that thing, man. Nobody. I'll record oh my it. And gosh. I'll catch it at the same time. <laughs> I don't want to fight nobody. It's just me. Too much unclean spirits out here. You know what I mean? Yes, God will definitely send you somebody that will walk side by side. I pray the Lord gives you direction. 
uh, the wisdom you're seeking, Whitney, for your life and the ministry upon your life. I've been thinking, dealing with six things, and I think I got diseases that never been before. Please pray for me that I got. Yes, I pray right now, Moses, you be completely set free from every demonic STT in Jesus' mighty name. Be free. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Recording catch. Yes, I pray, see right now that that cancer will be cursed at its root in the mighty name of Jesus, and you will be completely healed in Jesus' name. Yes, I will get in the water with her. I will get in the water. I'm going to be a soldier. What if your husband, who is a bishop, divorced you and didn't want the divorce? Am I free to remarry? To remarry? If we go by the law, if you're under the law, if you're under the law of Moses, if you got a certificate of divorce, you are released. Um, you have to follow the Lord, though. There is grace. There is not, that is not the unforgivable sin. If the Lord has released you in the spirit to remarry, you can do so. Some people are going to fight me on this. They're going to they're going to fight tooth and nail. Mm. Look, my ex got remarried. I'm remarried. Mm -hmm. We're both happily remarried to godly people. Mm -hmm. So. Follow the Lord on it. But definitely he needs to he needs to repent <laughs> and and ask for forgiveness for that sin for sure. And have godly sorrow. A lot of people don't have godly sorrow, man. Mm, they just say, Oh, I repent, sorry, forgive me, but they never feel the weight of the sin. That's really what changed me too, is godly sorrow, feeling the weight of the damage yes. that I had caused and the pain that I had caused. That's really what changed me. Yes, Adriana, I pray right now that your marriage will be restored, it'll be healed, and you'll walk hand in hand in Jesus' name. Someone named Natalie Hughes wants you to pray for her future marriage. Natalie Hughes, may the Lord give you the husband you desire in his time and by his will in Jesus' name. And I'm desperately seeking. Go down. I Look at this. I'm desperately seeking his brain. Okay. Father, I thank you right now for Sophia. I pray that her father's uh, brain swelling to stop now. And I pray right now a new shunt in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Isaiah, look and move it up for me. Is it, hold on, is it normal for a forerunner to go through so much warfare? The enemy has been coming against my marriage. The Lord told me he would restore my wife, but she has, she has to want it. Listen, when you lock in, let me tell you guys, we are a frontline land-taking ministry. We are going after the enemy's camp. We're going to take territory. It comes with spiritual warfare. When you line up in this thing, man, you say, hey, we're going to go knock the devil out and we're going to take land. We're going to take territory for the kingdom of God. The, the kingdom of God is advanced violently and forcefully. What happens is the refining fire comes upon you and anything that doesn't belong will come to the surface. So when you plug into a ministry that carries the anointing, the anointing breaks the yoke, but also the anointing brings things to the surface that need to be removed. So when you plug into a God-fearing, God-loving ministry, then the fire of God will come upon you and it will start to remove the chaff from your life. Mm. Can't take no more. Amen. Yes, I'm glad that you guys were blessed by this teaching. I wanted to do it with my wife and, uh, you know. And, and I want to say this. Some of you guys are saying, forgive, Lord, forgive me and stuff like that. The Lord gives you grace. He yes. forgives you. If you've been in sin, if you've heard this teaching, you've been in sexual immorality, guess what, guys? You, have a, you, you can stand back up. You can start over. Tomorrow's a new day. Choose to do things different tomorrow. Choose to be a better person. Choose not to walk in sin. In Jesus' name. I pray right now, Samuel, that your marriage will be restored. I pray that any spirit of adultery that was attached mm -hmm. to you, Samuel, to be broken off of your life now, in Jesus' mighty name, be free from that adulterous spirit, in Jesus' name. Yeah, I pray them curses be broken from your life, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Of course, Mark, of course. By the glory of God. Yeah, I pray those anxiety attacks to be broken from your life, Rachel from things that have happened in you yesterday. As I command all traumas to be healed too. In Jesus' name, we love you too, Jen. Be on healthy marriage. Yeah, we'll do more for sure. For sure. We'll talk about a, how to have a healthy marriage. I don't know if you, 
I don't know if y'all ready for that because I'm, I'll admit we ain't perfect, nope. but we do the best we can. That's right. Man, we've come a long way though for sure. Yeah. A long way. I I did. Thank you. Thank you, Destiny. Yes, you will, Tia, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, Zach. Sherry, I pray for restoration in your marriage. Yes, kingdom marriage in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Guys, do me a favor. Like and share if you haven't already. Smash that like button if you're just tuning in. Share the broadcast. Um, this has been a good one. But, babe, I appreciate you being on here. Thanks for having me. Did you enjoy it? I always enjoy talking with you on live yeah. to people yeah. about our life. <laughs> yeah, well, we got some more topics coming. It's yes. going to be good. Um, Isaiah, bring me over real quick. I want to tell you guys, we have the prophetic school. Even if you're tuning to watch this in the future, you can be a part of the prophetic school. It has been wonderful. The teachings have been deep. Um, and things are going to only get deeper. So go to the supernaturallife.org, become a forerunner. It will give you access to the prophetic school. Or if you're on YouTube, I want to tell you, YouTube guys and gals, you have a chance to be a forerunner on YouTube if you want to. You just go hit that join link, and uh, it'll take you over there. If you're interested in only being on the healing and deliverance Zooms and the prophetic uh, Zooms, I've made even a level for you guys to get that be a live streamer. Uh, in the future, guys, that you guys aren't signed up and you're just watching and you're supporting as a subscriber or whatever here and there, I will do inclusive Zoom calls or me and the other evangelists will where we try to invite everybody. Here's the only problem, though. This is why I do it like I do. When you put a Zoom link, just so you guys know, just out there for everybody, corn sites get it and they start sending that stuff into the Zoom. And then you can have some very not so good stuff on your Zoom call. And if I'm live or if I'm recording, that stuff can get caught. And then we have to go through a lot of editing and a lot of stuff um, to get that fixed, okay, <laughs> to get that fixed. So that's why I rather do it through the forerunners and through links behind paywalls and stuff because it keeps things safe. I can send it to emails that I know are safe and stuff like that. It's just how it goes. So that's why I do things the way that I do. But, yeah, if you want to be a part of the prophetic school, we have the basic foundation forerunner school that I did over, I think, almost three years ago right now. It's up that you can take to become a certified forerunner just to have foundational things there. All the foundational teachings on there, teachings on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the service gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, all of it. My goodness, culture of honor, marriage stuff. We got all kinds of stuff on there. Um salvation baptism and water baptism the holy spirit so all that stuff's on there so you guys become a forerunner supernaturallife.org or join right on youtube but anyway hope to see some of you guys uh in the forerunner school i'll be on there at the time of this teaching we have a new session coming up soon and i hope you guys that are watching the future enjoyed all the sessions but with that being said bring my wife back on one more again honey i love you you want to tell the people want something before we get off of here? I love you all. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the prayers during this time of pregnancy and just everything. I see all the love and support and just thank you guys for being on here tonight. And we will see you very soon on the next one. We'll do this again. Amen. If you guys like it, if you guys like it, put a number three in the chat. Put a number I've always wanted to do that. You always do <laughs> Put a number three in the chat. That's my favorite number. Put a number but three in the thanks, chat. Thanks for having me on. I love you too. Of course, babe. Love you. All right, I bring me back. Guys. Putting number three. <laughs> they will. You got to give it a second. It's got to oh. catch up. Chat's delayed a little bit. Okay. Y'all, y'all go in and drop a three for the lady. <laughs> All right, guys. That's it. Isaiah, bring up the thumbnail. Hold on. Bring up the music. Hey, it is. It's not finished yet. We'll be back soon. Love you guys. I got your presence on my mind. I got your presence on my mind. I, my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind.
my mind I feel like it's been like that all the time I feel like it's been like that all the time Cause truly you've been really on my mind And your presence with my soul alive How can I be known and your name not be lifted high? Oh, oh, oh. pain helps me grow, oh. death helps me show, oh. The resurrection power living in me left to cry I need a stress, them trials come with tests, yeah Moving like a Tesla, got some moving really glass, yeah Shine that light on your flesh like fat Sippin' on black, yeah, we sippin' on red I'm capping my rhyme and I do what I said Revival is here, this the start of the end I got your presence on my mind I feel like it's been like that all the time I got your presence on my mind I feel like it's been like that all the time I got your presence on my mind I feel like it's been like that all the time I got your presence on my mind I feel like it's been like that all the time Tell me the truth and I promise you did God is in rhythm, bro, tell me what it is Spirit's moving even in the kids If you think it's fake, then it is